Hey everyone, welcome back to High T Hoops. High T Hoops. This is Brian Boucher at the Duke of Hoops, and I'm joined by Skylar Smith. What's up, Duchess? Hi, Brian. Uh, so excited for the pod today. We haven't had a player on in a while, and yeah, just really excited to talk to him. An American one at that. American in the BBL. Our special guest today is Darian Nelson Henry of the Leicester Riders. What's up, Darian? Welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Appreciate you having me on today. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, and I know you just had the BBL Cup final or semifinal, which we'll get to in a little bit. But we want to start off the podcast yeah. because we've actually hooped together in Seattle. You're from the Seattle area. Talk to us a little bit about what it was like growing up in Kirkland, right? And in, in this, but in the Seattle area, playing basketball. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, yeah, born and raised in Kirkland, my whole life uh, lived in the Seattle basketball scene, I guess. And it's, uh, yep. I think it's an underappreciated scene, you know. Um, a I lot think so of good too. hoopers have come out of that area. Um, you know, people talk about the, the big names, like obviously LA, New York, and then like the Midwest produces like a fair amount. And so, yeah, Seattle doesn't get as much love as I think it deserves sometimes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I played basketball, I played AAU with Zach Levine. I mean, I've been playing in, yeah. um, Jamal Crawford's pro-am over there, seen some big names come through there. Um, yeah. And then like, I, I played in Isaiah Thomas's tournament uh, yep. a couple of years ago down in Tacoma. That was, there were some big names rolling through there. So um it's a it's a growing scene and i know that a lot of hoopers have like appreciation for it but um the outside world doesn't appreciate it as much but hoopers definitely do yeah i mean saddle's pretty under the radar overall um for a lot of Mm -hmm. different things but basketball and you know jamal crawford having every summer like the green lake which was an nba street volume two like the green lake pickup court oh those about those runs are so fun and you're right there's so many good hoopers jamal crawford's a big name isaiah thomas were there any other like who are some of like the guys other than Zach Levine that you were in, in the scene while you were growing up? Let's see, man. Um, I mean, just speaking from who I grew up, like idolizing, like coming through the friends of hoops program, which I played for AAU wise was um, it was like Spencer Hawes, John Brockman. Oh who yeah. Was like a, if you remember him from UW, uh, Martel Webster, Isaiah Thomas. Um, and then like my best friend, uh, Matt Stodiker, who's, uh, mm-hmm. his, his brother played Ryan Stodiker, who wound up playing overseas for a handful of years, played on that team. Um, a lot of guys came through the AAU from, from friends of who, but Seattle Rotary was big when I was, uh, younger, which was like Tony Roten, Peyton yep. Siva, yep. who now plays, I want to say he plays Alba Berlin, which is EuroLeague, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. he played Alba Berlin last year. I'm not sure where he is at this year. And then, um, good friends with Nate Sigma, who is, uh, Jack Sigma's son yes. and then yeah. Luke Sigma, who now plays in either Alba or Valencia, which are two EuroLeague teams. And so, yeah, my, my age group had a lot of, had a lot of guys growing up. Yeah. You were, you're a few years younger than me, but yeah, the AAU scene, I was like AAU with John Stockton's kid. Um, oh yeah. Yep. So they yeah, played like, with Riley Stockton, his, yep. his cousin or David's cousin. I know yeah. God Riley kills me in the Washington athletic club league, yeah. uh, man. <laughs> he is so good. You're like, yeah. Oh, I got to Like I'm just at work on conference calls all day. I'm like, God, I got to guard <laughs> Riley tonight. Fuck. <laughs> It's brutal yeah. out there um, seriously man they're they're all just like uh i mean i mean uh gonzaga was one of my first offers and like the highlight of my basketball life i swear was uh uh i got to do a pick and roll clinic with john stockton like at camp. <laughs> that's amazing like i was his like i was his screener and then he like did the breakdown for all the guards and i was just like am i really doing a pick and roll clinic with john stockton right now <laughs> yes like, this is that- crazy that's amazing. And his whole family is always running through like, yeah, David, Riley, and then like all those guys, there's a couple of them and they're all good hoopers, fundamentally strong. Like, yeah, it's, you see them every pop scene. up all the time. Yeah. Uh, do you think the supersonics are coming back? You think the NBA is going to expand? Oh man, I hope they do. I hope they do. Uh, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but I have like a running bet with like one of my, uh, with one of my college roommates, like a thousand dollar running bet that I, he gave me 10 years to get the seat with, to get the Sonics back. I think I got like three years left on the bet. So I'm hoping right. it pulls through. I don't I know if he like remembers though. It's good. It's looking good for you. Yeah, honestly, I'm hoping fingers the, crossed, man. The pandemic has helped because all the owners want those expansion fees and have that yeah, exactly. upfront cash. Absolutely. There's so many billionaires here. Like Bezos, just throw a little bit or McKenzie. Let's get McKenzie Bezos as the owner. That would be a dream. Seriously. Yeah, we don't want Jeff Bezos as the owner. <laughs> yeah. No. We, so, Skylar, you're Mackenzie. Who would be your yes. ideal owner, Skylar? Mackenzie. What's our last name now? Mackenzie Scott. Oh, true. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. That's your dream? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, that'd be amazing. Have, Darren, uh, have you heard of the London Looper Lonix? I have not. What is this? Please this tell is, me more. This is, uh, this is our fake NBA team, London's first NBA team that we made up on Twitter. 
Uh, we've got a sweet logo. If we're like, if the supersonics aren't coming back, let's bring the looper Lonics back. <laughs> and, a lot of great people committed already. Yep. We got Mo Muncy as the GM. Um, we've got coach Paul Nicholson from the Raiders. He said he'd come down and we could poach him to coach the team. Unreal. Uh, we have a standing offer with Gareth Bale to come in, uh, <laughs> which, you know, we'll see how that goes, but yeah. And it might start as an esports team, Skylar. Now that we had the Manchester Giants esports guys on. Okay. Just pitching this on the pod. It's more realistic. I'm, I mean, the expansion fees, what, like, what was it? 1.5 billion, 2.5 billion. I think, yeah, I think it's 2.5. Oh Sheesh. That's a lot. Sure. All right. Let, let's, uh, let's run through, uh, your Ivy league days. So I went to Dartmouth, right. you went to Penn. Um, what was it like? Why did you choose to go to an Ivy league school where, uh, you know, they don't give athletic scholarships in the Ivy league right. if, if the audience in the UK doesn't know. Um, so it's a, it's much more of a commitment to the education. Um, but what were some of the reasons you decided to go to an Ivy league school with offers at other big name schools? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was definitely a, a, a situation that I had to weigh like all the factors for. And, um, I had some decent offers like from, from quality schools. Like I, I was talking to Stanford, they hadn't offered, I had one from Cal Berkeley and mm -hmm. stuff like that, which are also pretty good academic schools. Um, part of the thing was I, I wanted to get out of the Seattle West coast area. That was part yeah. of it. And I hadn't spent any time really. My first time to the East coast was actually on my official visit to wow. Philly. Yeah, I went with my dad and um, I fell in love with it immediately. And the, the guys who were my upperclassmen that showed me around um, were great. They were awesome. And they really did a good job of selling the place, I guess. Not that yeah. they had much selling to do, you know, it speaks for itself, the the history and the merit of the school. So um, yeah, I actually had a, a visit set up to Columbia the weekend following my uh, visit to Penn. And I had to call, I committed the Tuesday after I went. So I left on Sunday night, showed up committed Tuesday had to call up the Columbia coach like hey look I'm sorry I got to cancel sorry, this man. visit he was not happy he was not happy about that <laughs> well my sister we went to my sister went to Columbia not a sports school not a big yeah. culture of sport there no absolutely I could I can imagine and you know I mean you're in New York City not that Philadelphia doesn't have its fair share of distractions and other stuff going on yeah. but the basketball tradition in Philadelphia is massive yep and so I could see why in New York you know there's a million other things going on so maybe sports at least college sports kind of takes a back seat. Yep. And they don't like, they don't have facilities cause it's so hard to get real estate in New York. So yeah, like totally. their gyms are in basements. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I've gone to those gyms. The football team I think has to practice in New Jersey. Like they can't even, yeah, they can't really. even have a field in New York. Oh it's man. Brutal. But I think yeah. we crossed though. We didn't cross over exactly. I think you're exactly four years younger. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of the guys that I played with at Dartmouth, um, I started the club basketball team there, but right. in the Ivy league, you get a lot of, uh, a lot of people going to the gear day and then quitting um, because right, their yeah. scholarship isn't tied to it. So right. we had a lot of guys go over and uh, I played with all these guys. So I'm going to rapid fire some names. Just want to see if you, uh, you matched up against them. Gabbis mm -hmm. Maldunas. Yeah. Name rings a bell. I think I, I think okay. I might've played against them maybe one or two years. Uh, okay. Yeah. All of these guys, probably only a couple years uh, with the overlap. Mm -hmm. John Golden. John Golden. Yeah. I definitely remember him. He was like a little wing slasher. Six, six. Yeah. yeah. Big dunker. Will yeah. McConnell, this one's a reach. I don't know if he played. No, I, that does, doesn't ring a bell. Tyler Melville. Tyler Melville, maybe. It sounds familiar. Okay. I'm 6 2 like, guard. I'm off trying the to wing. flip through the scouting reports like exactly. in my head, you know. And I'm, I'm, some, some, some people that I know are better at this than I am. Like, he can just recall names that they yep. played against like that. And like my coach, like Rob Padanastro, for example, he's a basketball database. You bring yeah. up one name and he's like, oh, yeah, I recruited this guy. I was talking to him. We watched his film like six years ago. I'm like, dude, I don't even know who I played against last week. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Gabbis and John, I mean, were incredible. It was really fun to play against them. But mm -hmm. enough of Dartmouth nostalgia, enough of Ivy League nostalgia. Skylar, you could go I feel into like some... I could just not say anything and you guys could I know, just I go could. the whole pod like this. That's I not mean, a good I guess it's, it. Brian lets me go through my my Michigan stuff plenty on this pod. I know. But let's, let's shift <laughs> it's good away It's good to have some this. Ivy League hoopers for once, Skylar. Enough all right. of all of your yeah. NBA right. players. Not so many of us make it out, you know. We got to you know, hold on. It's true. Let's transition though a little bit towards uh, the BBL. So what excited you about the opportunity to play in the BBL? What made you want to join the writers? Yeah, I mean, um, sorry to uh, take it back to the Ivy League again, but I got to do it. it. So if you remember this, uh, Tyler Bernardini, who was a basketball, uh, he's a Penn basketball guy. Mm -hmm. um, he played for writers, I think immediately out of college or one year removed from college. He did a little oh, stint nice. in Italy. And, um, you know, I've kind of followed him from afar, social media wise, he was 
exactly four years ahead of me. So he graduated okay. as I came in and I saw his success over here. They were winning trophies. He got to do his MBA up at Loughborough as well. And, you know, oh, nice. I had played in Europe for three or four years, you know, before this. Okay. And I'm kind of seeing that the, the Masters is a, a realistic possibility. I've seen that there's a culture of success here. So when um, things kind of fizzled out for me in Bosnia, um, I got a call from the riders and, you know, everything seemed to fit together. And um, yeah, when you play overseas for a couple of years, you start to realize there's perks and drawbacks to every country that you play in and mm -hmm. um the language barrier not being there um in england is uh is death was definitely a factor and just like the quality of living you know i was coming from bosnia who is still recovering from a civil war you know and yeah <laughs> yeah and then Jeez. i get to right yeah so and then you get to come somewhere like uh the uk which is a little bit more stable uh and you know it, it makes a world of difference uh your off the court life you know can directly directly relay into your uh performance on the court so i think that's definitely yeah. a factor I took into account. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like you prioritized education and kind of setting yourself up after basketball, you know, for your entire career. Are those huge factors with you when you make these decisions? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the way that I look at it, I guess, is um, I've put so much effort and like blood, sweat and tears, I guess, whatever you want to call it into basketball. You know, it's been my life for 20 years at this point. And um, It'd be a shame if I wasn't able to um, extract other things for, from my life uh, due to my effort and the hard work I've put in towards basketball. So, yeah. you know, being able to get an education via basketball, whether it was my undergrad back in, at Penn and, you know, and now getting a master's up at Loughborough. Um, yeah, might as well, you know, cash in on all that hard work that you put in. And um, I've used it to relay into like coaching opportunities and like working in the community. I know yeah. um, riders have, do a great job. They have this thing called the uh, Lesser Riders Foundation, which basically mm -hmm. reaches out to local schools and um, kind of tries to get the kids interested in basketball and spread yeah. awareness for health and, you know, mental health, health uh, physical well-being and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just uh, being able to reach into different avenues via basketball is huge for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And from the playing style perspective, you know, we hear a lot about the BBL being a little bit more faster paced, maybe more similar to the game in the States. How have you seen what the playing style is like in the UK versus elsewhere in Europe? Yeah, I think uh, I would definitely say that the BBL is the most comparable to NBA style of basketball. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we pride ourselves at uh, with the writers uh, on playing really good defense. And like, that's kind of like our identity, right? And um, I think we take the most pride in defense, like yeah. unlike the NBA. So like our games might not always look like it, but we what definitely do you mean? have we have <laughs> NBA, <laughs> NBA, come on. I was just watching Shaq to the Fool before I got on here and I'm just <laughs> sitting there like, oh my God, this like really happens. So. <laughs> so yeah, I think we pride ourselves on defense. So maybe our games don't always look like it, but I think you watch some other games and it is run and gun, man. It is yeah. just like the NBA, you know, shots under 14 seconds on the shot, like past half court, like boom, boom, bucket. So yep. yeah. Um, Austria, we were averaging like four, 50, 60 points a game and like other, other places. Yeah, like our more like a high school game or like a slow Ivy league game or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Not so much like the, you know, hundred point scoring games or, or more that you see sometimes in the BBL. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, you mentioned you had played in a bunch of other countries in Europe. When you eventually came to the UK, did you find that there was, you know, a big culture adjustment with the team was, you know, the banter kind of different, or do you find that the culture at every team you join is kind of the same and it's just basketball's basketball yeah i mean um there's always a little bit of consistency when it comes to basketball because like i mean everywhere the terminology is the same da, 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 da. but um it also remains the same because there's three to four sometimes even like five or six americans on every team so oh um, good point yeah, so if you want to kind of, and like, you know, the first question is like, oh, I'm from Chicago. Oh, do you know this guy? Do you know that guy? Yeah. You know, like, you're always like, literally spinning exactly that. what Brian just did do. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, exactly. It's just the basketball thing. You just spin that web together. Oh, I know this guy who knows that guy who played against this other dude. Like, and it's always, yeah. it, you always spin that web. So everybody knows somebody that knows somebody, basically. Yeah. Um, so that's always a sense of familiarity that you have, which is great. Um, but in terms of culture, like um, surrounding you and within the team, it's always different from place to place. Um, the banter is definitely different, um, but it remains, the, you know, it's always the same kind of stuff. Like you're just poking fun at your guys, which is which is always fun. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, as similar as uh, England and the BBL is to America and the NBA, um, there's its fair share of differences, you know. Um, I mean, I can't really, I can't really think of any off the top of my head or pinpoint any, um, because at this point, I don't even know what like normal basketball culture is, because yeah, I, I've experienced so many different places. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's just kind of fun to uh, like experience uh, different people's takes and you know different yeah. environments to play in. Yeah. Yeah. When you're living in the UK, is there anything specifically that you miss about America? And I'm I'm not saying that there's a ton to miss about America, but I feel like there <laughs> is right like random little things. Like when I lived in the UK, I really missed ranch dressing. It's just oh, yeah. not a thing there. And I did my pizza <laughs> in it. Yeah. Um, so I want to know what you miss about the US. And I also want to know what your favorite part about living in the UK is. Yeah. Um, there are some things I miss. There's always like a small substitute that you can find. I mean, Chipotle is one. I haven't had some Chipotle in years now. Yeah. Wow. I know that's, I know that's crazy. There's one in London down though. To London. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. There's like one or two in London. We just got a Taco Bell here oh, in uh, there's no what? taco bell in london yeah just just got a taco bell which is oh. huge i'm, I'm super Do they have mexican went, pizza no they don't have, they, it's like a oh, it's like a limited know, menu it yeah it's like a limited menu man it's like it's always different even uh like the mcdonald's in austria is awesome like yeah. for example like mcdonald's in austria is better than mcdonald's in america for sure yeah which is like oh, weird yeah, you know you just find these little things um yeah ranch dressing is absolutely one of them yeah mountains um, mountains yeah mountains i wish that i wish i had some more of those but i got my fa i got my fair share of mountains in austria so like okay, i can still fair. yeah i can still like hold it back those I, my second year in austria i was playing like in the alps like the very beginning of them Dang. so in like a little mountain town called kopfenberg which is like maybe thirty thousand people mm -hmm. amazing hikes in the area like this it's called the gruna sea it's like this lake where uh it like goes like the um, glaciers melt and they it fills up this lake like during the springtime ashton kutcher like posted about it and now it's like popping off there's like all these tour buses going <laughs> used to be like influencer a hidden spot secret. Yeah, yeah it used to yeah. be a hidden secret now it's an influencer but now there's like tour <laughs> buses running up there all the time so oh, no. yeah you you find you find cool things uh in your area uh that can supplement the stuff from the u.s basically is what i'm trying to say yeah yeah, yeah. it's kind of like transitioning from uh seattle to philadelphia or the east coast where it's yeah, just totally exactly. flat and just a totally different environment oh man yeah east coast is uh east coast is different for sure that was like my first culture shock ever you know like going from west coast to east coast while it's yep. still minor and you're still in america absolutely different world out there yeah, absolutely. um and you know i guess that was a good stepping stone for then like my first season was in poland which is like pretty much yeah. as extreme as it gets and then like i eased it off a little bit with austria <laughs> then went back to bosnia which was a little crazy and now i'm like found a good middle ground in <laughs> england here so that's i found i found i found my comfort zone i guess you could yeah. say so Did favorite you see parts yourself staying in england long term um yeah that's i guess kind of to be decided uh my girlfriend's from austria and so uh yeah we've been together she's doing her masters at Loughborough as well with me so she's oh, living oh, nice. here with me um, we're both set up studying right now. Um, trying to, I, I'm on a two year deal. So she's doing her master's over one and I'm doing my master's over two, like a stretch program mm -hmm. to make it easier on, um, training schedule. Us, like, elite athletes. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll be here for at least the next two years and then, um, hopefully like the world will return to a little bit normality and I can kind of figure out like, um, you know, do I enter the job market straight after my master's or do I play maybe one or two more years like on a part time deal and like work half the time and yeah. play half the time? You know, it's to be determined. We'll kind of see how things are how things are going. But um, to answer your question about like favorite part of England, like just living here in general is amazing. Sometimes you forget yeah. that you're living in England, especially during a during a national or a global pandemic. You know, you're stuck inside all the time all of a sudden you're like, yeah, oh, let's go on a walk, like, or let's go on a little hike. And you're like seeing castles on the hike and like these massive <laughs> old, like 1200s cathedrals and stuff. You're like, oh, and like you go through like a little sheep, like pasture and like all this crazy stuff. And you're like, oh my gosh, like you forget, like there's these beautiful rolling hills outside and like yeah. there's old architecture and all this amazing stuff. And so, yeah, it's like, it's like living in a fairy tale, you know, like you, yeah. you think you think about Harry Potter and like all this like other like kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden you're in it, like, yeah. you're like doing it. So my favorite thing that shocks Americans in the UK is just how old everything is. Right. Because we're used to like hitting a, a wall with how old things are in this country. Yeah, it's it's basically when the pilgrims came yeah. and anything. Before Seattle, that, it's, it's just 
Seattle's yeah. so new. Seattle, Seattle yeah. everything Lewis is like and Clark is like our guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then everything in England is so old. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's the thing that shocks Americans the most. And it's such a yeah. funny, random thing. Oh, totally. It was the same for me. Going back to like the parallel between like Seattle, Philly and yeah. like now, then it's like from Philly to England. It's my, when my dad and I were on You're my going back in history. It. Yeah, exactly. We saw like like these places where Benjamin Franklin sat and we're like, yep. oh my God, like that's crazy because <laughs> so there's old. nothing like, yeah, it's so old. And then you get out here and you're like, the first queen of like, blah, 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 <laughs> yeah. like sat here on this stone. And you're like, that was in like 200. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're like Smith Tower in Seattle, like, whoa, early 1900s or like whenever <laughs> it was like, that's old here. Look at the yeah. stone. And they made it in stone. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very it funny. Is mad. Yeah, um, definitely. But you've been at the Riders for a couple of years now. Uh, what has it been like transitioning to training during the pandemic, getting the season off the ground? Obviously, this BBL season and the NBA have just been, you know, mm-hmm. a, a really tough slog to get through. How has it been training and then actually playing in arenas without fans? What's that been like? Yeah, definitely interesting. Um, it's 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 funny because we got like three new Americans in this year, right? So their mm-hmm. only experience with the BB or with the Riders and the BBL has been like under this pandemic. Um, And I have to like remind them sometimes like it's like so much different here when it's back to like the normal world, whatever that's going to look like, you know? Yeah. Um, Because I was here for like, I mean, October through March of last year. And it was like an amazing experience. Like the Riders fans are so loyal, so amazing. They do like tons of community outreach stuff. Like the season ticket holders will come in and we'll have all these fundraisers and like really, really fun events and stuff like that. And we can't have any of that now. So like the connection and like the, um, I don't know, I want the camaraderie within the team is there, but the connection and the camaraderie with the outside fan base isn't there, which is like one of the things that makes Leicester so special and the BBL so special yeah. because the fans are so passionate and like so welcoming. Um, yep. just so welcoming. Like I know my girlfriend has like gotten rides like from season ticket holders to games and stuff. Like she's buddies with yeah. like all of them on Instagram and stuff. They're like <laughs> always chatting up with the BBL gossip and stuff like that. So it's just really it, it's it's a shame that like some of those guys don't get to experience it. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, when it comes to training under a pandemic, like yeah, we get in, we have to take our temperatures, like we have to sanitize like every 10, 15, 12, 15 minutes or something like that. Yeah. We gotta. We're, they basically follow us everywhere so we have to have a chaperone through the gym like anywhere we go we can only have small lifting groups in the weight room uh like new balls every 20 minutes that they have to be sanitized just like small things like that um when do you forget about it when you're on the court yeah like, absolutely I, it just all of goes a sudden, away yeah i don't think about it that's that's one of the beauties of basketball is like you can kind of forget all of the external issues like for those yeah. two hours you're on the court which is like, I swear that's like my stress relief. Like that's my therapy, you know, just going out there yeah. and hooping for a little bit. Yeah, we were um, talking about- The NBA just got rid of like, they're not allowed to high five when they're off the yeah. free throw line. And I'm like, good luck trying to get them to do that. That's such a natural thing. Yeah, when you're yeah. just in the game and like on a roll. Like I'm sure they're not thinking about COVID. Right, I didn't even know that they did that. But yeah, we had the same like uh, rule. They give us like a little rule like spreadsheet and it's like no high fiving, no shouting like because wow. that'll like that'll like no spread shot. the particles or something i don't know but it's like if you're like if my if one of my teammates like goes and dunks on somebody like good what luck gonna do me not to, yeah, yeah good luck getting me not to yell like it's an yeah. instinct you know yeah good job well. good yeah job. there you go <laughs> so you mentioned that you know kind of the camaraderie between the fans and the team has been you know what you've kind of been missing this season so we have a little game Uh, to try and you know kind of get to know the players on your team hopefully we can you know let the fans know so we're just going to run through rapid fire just tell us the first teammate who comes to your mind when we Mm -hmm. say the descriptor do you want to alternate Skylar you go first sure okay okay so who's the funniest player on the team Zach Jackson who has the best style on the team Mello uh Jamel Anderson sorry (laughs) What young players on the team should we watch out for? Kyle Jimenez. Is Connor Washington the fastest man alive? Him and Usain Bolt are like net for net, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most likely to do something that's going to make you have to do extra laps or extra sprints? Oof, probably Gino. <laughs> <laughs> most bounce on the team? I'd say it's a tie between Gino and Will. 
Gino's like probably bouncier, but Will is just so long. Like yeah. it, the stuff that he can do like in the air is crazy. Who's the best shooter? Corey Johnson. Most likely to be late for the bus. Probably me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, probably Gino, yeah. Who takes the <laughs> longest to like get ready? Like, does anyone have a very intense skincare routine? Oof. Not that I know. It's definitely not me. I'm looking, I, I don't know if you've seen this beard, but it's pretty raggedy. Right now. <laughs> it looks amazing on the court with the ponytail. <laughs> oh man. It's a little, it's a little too much. I think it's going to come off in the next couple of days here. It's like, <laughs> it's getting a little too much. Uh, in terms of routines, I don't know. Jamel and Corey will like, they get their hair done like once every week or every two <laughs> weeks. And I know it takes like two, three, four hours with like some of those braids they got going on. So I'd say it has to be one of those guys because that's some serious commitment. What are you going to win most likely for? What's your superlative on the team? Yeah, you didn't say yourself once. Oh, man, probably like clumsiest or goofiest or something. <laughs> I don't, that's I a don't good know. One. Most like, like, I don't know, most weird stuff said. Like My, my, <laughs> my pregame hype up speeches are just god awful. So <laughs> Like Harry Kane levels. Did you see that documentary where he was hyping up the Spurs? No, I haven't seen it, but I, I'll look it's it up. It's so funny. It, he, he's like, it's like the, uh, it's not cheesy. Skylar, how would you describe the Harry Kane I, pregame st- speeches? Just, Come like, on, lads, lads, yeah, lads. There's like no actual like flavor to it. It's like, he's yeah. just like, let's go win. And it's like, yeah. all right. Because he's not yeah. super vocal. It's like Kawhi. It's like, yeah. it sounds weird when he's so vocal and shouting. Yeah. My thing is, is like, I, I try and get like too logical and like technical about it. <laughs> like instead of just like firing people up, I'm like, their zone is terrible. And their statistic <laughs> three point percentage is lower than ours. Therefore we should, you know what I mean? It's like I, Ivy league, the f- Ivy league is game. bursting yeah. out of you. you yeah, can't help statistically it. more likely to win this game. Guys. Yeah, let's do like, it. That's not hyping anybody up. That's just <laughs> listing facts. It's like, all right, let's, let's get out there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. That's great. I think that was TikTok link Skylar. We can clip that for social pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go into the BBL cup semifinal. So to start off with uh, as Americans, we're raised with sports where there is one championship. There's there's no yeah. Yeah. cup. There's no trophy. There's So we're learning all this new in the BBL. How do you like that there are multiple opportunities to win these type of trophies throughout the season rather than just all or nothing? Yeah, it's, def- it's definitely weird. You know, um, I don't know. People joke around that, like, it's just giving every club an excuse to, like, say that they were champions in some right. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I don't know. Like, you can go and tell sponsors, like, hey, we won a trophy last year, but you only won, like, one of the four possible trophies. So it's kind of an interesting thing for, like, Americans. We Like, we definitely joke around about that. And um, it's, like, carryover from soccer or football or whatever, I guess. Yeah. Like, because they do the same kind of thing. Um, yeah. It's definitely a good opportunity, like um, – especially if you could win like two or three of them to like be able to say like, we really like that. That's when you know you really dominated that season. Yeah. But if you had like one, like one team win each, then it's kind of like, well, like kind of a split season. Who, yeah. Like who really. Yeah. So, I mean, I know it's definitely like the writers have, I think they've won all, I think they've won like three out of four or maybe they've won all of them at one point, like uh, maybe a few years back. Um, And that's definitely like something to work towards. Um, Yeah, unfortunately, it's not going to be us this year, but um, we can still get three out of four. And I think uh, I think the guys are pretty, to use a British term, gutted after yesterday. Um, Gutted. Gutted, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, So Um, it's a yeah, it's tough. You know, those are the ones you want to win. I mean, as fans, that was a really fun game. And, you know, compared to kind of the NBA early season where, mm. you know, the Clippers are down by 50 at half, Come, you know, they're not, tr- a lot of the teams aren't trying as much. It's almost like a preseason, yeah. like you versus the Eagles in a semifinal matchup and you bat like back and forth was a lot of fun. I don't know if you'd get that without a cup semifinal and without that type of stakes uh, in a competition. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a really good point. Like it's kind of something to bring a little intensity to like the mid season, like aspect of it. Like, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, like a lot of people say they don't even watch NBA till the playoffs. That's like, yeah. a, that, sh- that should be like a catchphrase for the NBA. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> like, and so it's, it is, it is a nice little touch that can add that, um, that intensity, that little, like, um, little flavor to midway through the season. And yeah, we have trophy, we have the trophy coming up, uh, yep either end of this month or beginning of next month we got we drew lion in the first round of trophies so 
should be pretty good. It'll be a fun one. But yeah, this yeah, was, you know, would you say the Eagles are your are your rivals? Is the line it feels like you, the the Lions and the Eagles have kind of separated out from the rest of the league. Yeah, I I, I mean I think it sort of looks that way. And um, you know, our our they were the ones who were in our group for the uh the group phases of Cup. Group so. of death. Yeah, exactly. That's what they called it, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was definitely some hard. Those were definitely some hard fought battles. And uh, but yeah, Eagles have always. I think Eagles and Riders, especially because we're kind of further up north, has always been yeah. like a little bit of a little bit of a rivalry. Um, I mean, back when the London City Royals were a thing, um, I, I remember them. They were pretty decent. They disbanded before I actually got a chance to play against them. But I think that there's that London rivalry going on yep. and there's that like little Northern rivalry going on. And yeah, the other teams just kind of fit in where they can. I'm sure they, yeah. they had their own stuff. I think like Giants, Manchester Giants and Cheshire Phoenix have like a little thing going on. I'm sure like yeah. Bristol and Plymouth, maybe. I, I don't know. But as it's far as I'm concerned, those rivalries. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, your battle with Evan Maxwell was really fun to watch as well. Um, you know, you Appreciate guys were going at it back and forth. Uh Skylar's thick king Darius Defoe, who she's a huge fan of, <laughs> was also out there. Who's the yeah. toughest person to kind of go up against on the Eagles? On the Eagles, you know, uh, I mean, Maxwell is a really talented player, and their yeah. other their four man Gordon was is also really good. Yeah, but I think I think like a guy who's been with them for forever and he's kind of their X factor, obviously, is Ramon Fletcher. Um, yeah, we had him on the pod a, too. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. he's great. He's, yeah, yeah, he's a he's a nice guy. I mean, I've talked to him, chatted with him a little bit off on, on the court and off the court. Um, seems like a nice guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's he was pretty quiet last night, but he still has that impact because you have to you really you have to really focus on his abilities and taking him away. And you know, he's such a good passer and like has such a good IQ for basketball that um, if you if you take him out scoring wise, I, he's gonna have. I think last night he had like seven assists but in previous games i think he had 11 against us and like nine or something like that so yeah. he's always going to find a way to impact the game and you need to try to kind of neutralize that and like let other people become the impact players i suppose and well you and the riders i mean you have such a deep squad there's so many players that can contribute mm -hmm. he kind of it seems like he definitely picks his battles where he's like all right do we need a big like uh you know mid-range jumper right now he hit one you know yesterday uh, yeah. when he, when they needed it, his first points of the game, like, I don't think he scored in the first half even, but right. he seems to do just enough for what the team needs and still give the players, you know, across the Eagles, those highlights. And, you know, yeah, I, totally. writers seem to do the same, you know, it's, you're spreading it around. Someone seems to step up every, every game. Mm -hmm. Um, and if, that again, like if people aren't watching BBL and they're just kind of NBA fans in the UK, the mm -hmm. BBL is fun. And these battles are really fun. And I think people underappreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And it's just it's going back to the the culture here in England, you know, like soccer is holier than thou, you know, soccer is top, top. Uh, even just the other day, I was at the local corner store and these kids come running in for these little like sticker booklets, like of all their favorite like football players. Yeah. And, you know, like, where's our PBL ones? Like, we're like, you know, at <laughs> yeah, least in exactly. the US, they would have like NFL, NBA, MLB, like yeah. all next to each other, you know, but here it's just they just Premier got the League. soccer one, you know, so and, you know, so with how much money they feed into the premier league it's understandable that they have a little bit of separation against us but you know if you're if you're a basketball fan living in england there's no reason you shouldn't be involved with watching the bbl because it is it is really exciting yeah well best of luck in the trophy and the rest of the season for that um but tough loss man uh yeah, it, it could have gone either way yeah. yeah yeah and that's another one of those situations you know uh we went up to with i want to say four or five minutes left or something like that yep. and same kind of situation happened with London two, uh, two weeks ago. You know, we got to learn to put those ones away, you know, when we have that lead late. And yep. it's some, something we're working on and something that if we want to be like the championship caliber team that we strive to be, that we're going to have to solidify. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I have kind of a random question. Let's hear it. Why aren't you on social media? Darren, I can't <laughs> find you, man. No, I'm off the grid, man. I'm off the grid. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of... I don't really have a reason to be honest with you. Like um, I have Facebook, I have Facebook and I can like stay connected with my friends and family back home. And like the people I meet, like throughout the countries I've lived in and stuff via, via Facebook. And that's kind of enough for me. You know, I think if I did have, are you you're 26, how old are you? 26, 20, 26. Yeah. Facebook. Darian, yeah. come on. I know, I know, I know. I sound like my dad. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. But yeah, I mean, 
this I'm going to sound more like my dad now. Uh, even if I had Instagram, I probably wouldn't post on it or do anything anyway. So then I'd just be a creepy guy, like scrolling through Facebook, <laughs> like, like <laughs> observing everyone else and not telling anybody about myself, you know? So I think my profile picture from Facebook is like 2013 or something. So that just shows how often I really use it. Um, Man, that was such a dad a comment lot. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, I know. So I, I don't know. Uh, I just kind of, um, it, I'm a easily distracted person. I think if I had it, I would probably spend too much time on it. And uh, yeah, I just choose to live off the grid, I suppose. <laughs> You're probably a lot better off mentally than me. There. Yeah, um, I think I think I still get like the the reciprocal like. I still hear about it because like everyone asks me about it and I'm like, oh, I got to go look this up. And like, I, I mean, I read the news and like I watch, I, I mostly just watch like late night comedy, like people like I just watch Seth Meyers and just get my news from him basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, All right. So yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's maybe not the most whole picture of the world, but you know, it's, uh, it's enough. Well, we have some personal branding questions for you. Skylar, do you want to go through this and give a little Zoe setup? Sure. So we had uh, Zoe Skamen on. She's just a brilliant, brilliant person to listen mm -hmm. to about branding. Um, and she basically was telling us that, um, especially athletes on, on social media, uh, you can have these kind of pillars that are kind of like your side interests that you're kind of uh, bringing like people who follow you for basketball, you're kind of bringing more people into that mix through your separate yeah. kind of pillars. Absolutely. So for me, one of my pillars is like fashion. I really like fashion. I really like following walk-in fits. I really like following players fashion. And so that's kind of something that I engage in along with basketball. Awesome. So if you were on social media, if you were mm -hmm. trying Let's to build, build the brand, a strong brand yeah. on social media, what would kind of your pillars be? What are kind of your side interests that you would want to pull people in with hmm. yeah that's that's a really good question you know um because people have been trying to get me more involved in social media and i'm, I'm slowly starting to crack i think like you're getting I your may... master's man yeah you're be in the business world i know i know i, I do have a linkedin perfect there you go. <laughs> yeah. linkedin stories get it yeah that, that's all i need uh no but um and like even my girlfriend for example she uh she owns her own um she's at digital design and um graphic design and stuff like that amazing you have yeah, free literally, resources she tells me all the time she's like i'll run the whole thing you just need to take pictures <laughs> with me like she actually runs social media for multiple companies like and oh does, my like, darian you're so yeah. well set up for this maybe that's why i'm so scared off by it i don't know <laughs> maybe but uh, no, I should, like, and I mean, for example, some of my teammates, they, they get like multiple sponsors from, I mean, the, the I mean, pair of headphones that I had like on before I switched, like I got those for free from one of my teammates who's sponsored by a headphone company or like a speaker company. We yeah. got like one of our, like sponsored by my protein. Like we got like yep. a bunch of like guys that are just getting all this free stuff. And I'm more inspired by the free stuff, honestly. Than <laughs> yeah, <I am>. seriously. <laughs> yeah, but, I um, feel that. Yeah, but if I was going to say like some pillars that I would build off of um, when I was in undergrad for at Penn, I did sociology and um, like building on like me using basketball as a stepping stone to gather other resources for my life. Um, I think I would do it just like on community outreach and stuff like that, like getting kids involved and like making them realize that um, committing to sports isn't always necessarily a uh, one-way street, you know, um, yeah. you, just because you get involved in sports doesn't mean that you have to only focus on sports. You can use it as a way to network. You can use it as a way to gain an education. You can use it as a way to, you know, just be able to socialize with people like opportunities like this. Like uh, if I wasn't, if I wasn't a basketball player, like I may not be on right now, you know? So yeah. Um, there's just a lot of, a lot of opportunities that come via sports that you can utilize and uh, just using my, my platform, you know, to kind of tell my story and how it's benefited my life. I think that would be one way that I would try and contribute to it in addition to the free stuff, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, that's a big focus of High T Hoops too, is engaging yeah. in the local communities. We'll yeah. put these clips on TikTok. We'll see how that performs with the British basketball Perfect. community, Gen Z. If you want to, if you want to see me on social media though, you got to follow Jesse Chuku, who was, my, oh, yeah. he was, he was my four man last year popping off really? on TikTok, right? He has like <laughs> 3 million, 3 yes. million followers. He's huge. Yeah. 
I'm on a, I'm on some of the early ones during the first Let's lockdown. Go. During the first lockdown, me and him were like filming them all the time together. I think one of his first big ones that got like a million views, like me and him. Actually, my girlfriend Greta had the idea, and it was like when tall people like see each other, and it, it was like that. They, it was like the we were like past each other in the street. And it's like the internal dialogue that goes like within tall people's heads. Like, yes. And, yeah. So you gotta go scroll back in the. He's amazing. Yeah, he's great, man. His scroll skits- back in the feed. I'll go try to find some. He, like his yeah. skits around, like when he's playing in the states, he's they're like, "Wait, you're from the UK?" He's like, "Yeah," and like, "You play yeah. basketball?" And they're like, you, "You don't play basketball. You're from the UK." He's like, "No, I am British and I play basketball." Like he yeah. does skits like that all the time. They're great. Yeah, the be- the best is like the the Nike Nike versus yeah, yeah. Nike. So Do you have a the Nike? Tick, the tick mark. It's like what well, ticks? We don't have any bugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's great. He, he, He's a funny guy, man. And he, yeah, he's a good friend of mine who he was here last, uh, last season. And, um, yeah, he was actually, he's playing up at Lehigh when I was at Penn oh, and nice. I, we played against each other. Didn't even know it. Like, cause he was there with like CJ McCollum and all yeah, those guys. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, yeah. So he was there. I didn't even know I played against him until I got here, you know, again, classic small basketball world. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jordan Hamilton plays in Seattle all the time who play with yeah. captains with CJ McCollum yeah isn't it yeah it's just it's just weird how that kind of stuff goes yeah and then i was playing at the WAC, and uh, i don't know if you saw kareem jamar there uh yeah he plays he played in ukraine last year i don't know where he's at this year to be honest with you he played for my second team in austria and then one of his boys that he knew from montana brought him to seattle to play again and then all of a sudden i'm seeing him at my local pickup games and yeah. i actually knew him from austria which is it's that's just insane. so weird how that kind of stuff works out man that's amazing all right, yeah. so community, basketball, beard maintenance, you know, let's get yeah. some Manscaped uh, yeah, sponsorships. It's going to be Absolutely. great. Yeah, um, it'll be amazing. All right, so we have some audience questions here. So we had Paul okay. Nicholson on, uh, mm-hmm. coach at the Plymouth Raiders and on the community right. side. He's the one who did the, uh, the the BBL player didn't work, and then he just streamed it live on Facebook just oh, with legend. his handheld phone. Yeah, I, I watched that. I always watch all my games like the next day, and I saw him, and then I, yep. I was yep. like, oh, what a guy. Yeah. So I asked Paul how long uh, it would take him and their rehab guy to get me BBL ready. And I gave my scouting report, you know, overweight through the pandemic, arthritis in both ankles, you know, just turned 30, but good glue guy. So this was his question on Twitter. Let's end this now and ask Darian, can the Duke really hold his own in the league? And you can feel free to lie. What do you think? You played with me. Yeah. I mean, like you said, glue guy, that's all you need to say. As long as you're willing to do the hustle things, the small things, you know, grab a couple of boards, check a couple of bodies. Like I won't shout. I'm not yeah, shouting. You, no I'm, shouting, no high fives. Play by no the high rules. Fives. I'm going by the rules, the, by the book. Great locker room guy. Yeah. 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 You're a culture guy. You're a culture, a culture guy. guy. There, there you go. go. How many people are on the BBL rosters? I can be the 15th know. man, 12th man. Yeah, absolutely. We, there's always space. If you get that British passport, you're a shoe in. <sighs> What if I have another work visa? Does that work? Can I go in? Or do I have to have a special visa? We'll have to work through this. I'm telling you, man, the EU passports are a game changer for us Americans. <sighs> uh, former EU, I guess. Well, now it's British, but they like anywhere. I think they most places like intercontinentally, like you can bring in like multiple EU guys. You know what I mean? And yeah. now in, in the BBL, it's only one. And we filled that with Aaron, unfortunately. Sorry, man. Yeah. Maybe if you have some some long lost relatives in like Italy or something, <laughs> we'll try Believe to figure me, it we out. We're both desperate to get new passports. Um, <laughs> but this has been this has been great, Darian. Thank you so much for coming on. We've got one final question for you. Just gonna wrap up. What do you have to say to the Riders fans going into the remainder of the season? What do you want them to know? Where do you want? What do you want them to know? Where you guys are at? What to expect for the rest of the season? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, I just want to say like, we miss you guys. And you know, we wish we could have you guys out there every game. We always see you supporting on the on the big screen with the with the with the zoom call ins and everything like that. We really appreciate all of that. And despite the little social media that I have, I still see the outreach and we still feel (laughs) we still feel loved by you guys. And we wish you could we could see you more often. But um, yeah, just keep offering us your support. And um, we're gonna try and um, turn things around and like continue the momentum that we experienced earlier in the season. It was a, it was a tough one yesterday, but um, you know, there's, there's still three, three trophies that can be won and, and we're going to give our best to nab all three of them. All right. Thanks, Darian. Yeah, absolutely guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.